never bow to the mob. And unfortunately, for Toronto Blue Jays relief pitcher Anthony Bass, he learned the hard way. Or should I say, former Toronto Blue Jays player. Because even though he gave a formal apology, committed to re-education, and even offered to be paraded around as the integral part of their pride festivities, the team still cut him in the middle of the season, where they'll likely still have to pay the rest of his $3 million contract. All because the mob not only demands compliance, they demand subservience. Because it's also important to contrast Anthony Bass with Washington Nationals pitcher Trevor Williams, as they hold very similar values when it comes to religion and the MLB integrating pride into their product. But only one of them started apologizing for their beliefs, and only one of them will likely regret their decisions. As tragically, players and their publicists will look at Anthony Bass as a cautionary tale of pro athletes and social media, as Bass first experienced online controversy for taking to Twitter regarding his pregnant wife having to clean up after their kids on an airplane. Now that Twitter account has since been deleted, but later, Bass apparently reposted this video on Instagram that shared his religious views on why Christians should boycott Target. This resulted in Bass being booed when he played, even at Toronto Blue Jays home games. Go back to Tampa! So later, Bass issued an apology, committing to being re-educated by the organization. I apologize with them, and as of right now, I'm using the Blue Jays' resources to better educate myself, to make better decisions moving forward. Now, a common reply I've been seeing is, Bass is being booed by people that are upset that he apologized. But I saw these videos being posted by Twitter accounts with pride flags in their usernames, so I wouldn't be surprised if people from both sides of this social issue were booing Bass. The woke mob doesn't just want compliance, they need subservience. An apology can't be enough when they also have to scare everyone else into never daring go against their movement. So they're going to make an example out of you. Because after Bass's apology, he was going to be featured in their Pride Weekend celebration by catching the first ceremonial pitch. But apparently Twitter users thought this was a terrible idea, demanding the Blue Jays fire their public relations department over this decision, stating Bass is now in the group of those who hate and actually encourage others to email the Blue Jays organization directly to express their displeasure. So normally, a handful of angry people online isn't going to change how a $2 billion professional sports organization operates. But no, we live in a clown world. We're catering to chronically online activists with nothing better to do on the weekend than be a social media hole monitor is way more important than actually winning baseball games. But I guess it's not fair to expect bold blue collar American values from a Canadian baseball team that name themselves after a tiny bird that sometimes gets eaten by squirrels. Because Pride Weekend came and gone, and Anthony Bass was nowhere near the festivities. In fact, the Toronto Sun reported the Blue Jays never actually wanted Bass to participate. They apparently offered Bass an out, stating he defiantly wanted to be involved. So a day before, they DFA'd him which according to MLB.com means he was immediately removed from the team's roster. As ESPN reported that after Bass shared a post on social media calling for the boycotts of Target and Bud Light, Bass deleted the post, stating that he now knows better than to post his personal beliefs on social media. Now the Toronto Blue Jays manager stated that they cut him both on his on-the-field performance and the controversy, stating the distractions were something they had to factor in. And as of today, nobody has picked him up. So he's now a free agent, still owed the rest of his $3 million contract. So in the grand scheme of things, it's really not all that bad for him. Looks like he played professional baseball for over 11 years, got to travel the world, and make over $10 million. I think most of us would take that career in a heartbeat, even if we knew it would end this way. But I think the sad part about this whole situation is, it likely didn't need to come to such an abrupt, controversial end. Just compare him to Washington Nationals pitcher Trevor Williams, where Williams expressed disapproval of the Los Angeles Dodgers Pride Night, as they invited, disinvited, then invited again, a group of drag queen nuns to come receive an award at the stadium. Williams took to Twitter to speak about how the Dodgers' decision troubled him, especially as a devout Catholic, as he believes inviting the drag nuns violates the Dodgers' discrimination policy and encourages Catholics to reconsider supporting the Dodgers. Now where Anthony Bass mouthed his apology, Trevor Williams doubled down. We cannot stand idly by while our Lord gets mocked. And uh, before I hit send, you know, you, you try and do as much research as you can, right? You see the horrific videos that were posted of them. You read about what they were trying to do. Um, when, you, when you look at it from the outside in a totally objective view, this is, it's blatant mockery. And looking at the replies on Twitter, it appears many people agree with Williams and commended him for standing up for his principles. And hey, 
Trevor Williams is still on his team. Now I understand they're not a one-to-one -one comparison. Williams is a starter, four years younger than Bass, that never tried to get a flight attendant fired over spilled popcorn. But I just really wonder what would have went down if Bass never apologized to the mob over his religious beliefs. If Bass followed up that social media post that said Christian values are incompatible with whatever ESG scores Target and Bud Light are chasing, and instead of apologizing, he simply said nothing. Yeah, you'll have a group online criticizing his religious values, but you're also going to have a group of religious fans counteracting that negative attention with overwhelming support. Then I don't think he's generating a narrative about re-education in the Toronto Blue Jays organization. There's no controversy on why he needs to be at the forefront of their pride celebration. Thus, no distractions that their general manager had to factor into Bass getting cut. And although it's sad for Bass to just become a cautionary tale of how bending the knee is only halfway down where they want you to be, it's actually worse for the MLB because now they're going to keep catering to the wokeness until it finally implodes. As ESPN reports how Major League Baseball needs to improve racial and gender hiring practices. Writing about the 2023 MLB racial and gender report card and how they only got a C plus. Or even though over 40% of their current players are people of color with over 30% being Latino, apparently the glaring issue is that there's only 6% African Americans. What century does ESPN ESPN think we're in. This has nothing to do with GMs being unwilling to let certain people in their locker rooms. But does ESPN actually think that the MLB needs to start building baseball diamonds and batting cages in the hood? No. It's just Disney thinking they can treat pro sports the same way they do Marvel movies. And what do they actually think will happen if the MLB says, F that, next year we're getting an A-plus on the racial report card. You know that crazy stat of only having one Muslim player ever in the MLB? Time to make that match the world population at 24%. Never mind the fact that Michigan City has a all-Muslim city council that just banned pride flags. Never mind the fact that in Canada, parents are having their kids stomp on rainbow flags outside the school. Because in their world, you can cut a player for their Christian beliefs if it goes against the pride movement. But with other religions, I think we need to check our Oppression Olympics tier chart because in the current meta, some of those categories are pretty OP. So if you appreciate my concise, lighthearted commentary on what's really going on, hopefully I've earned your subscription, then check out my video on the exact moment a girl realized that wokeness is actually racist.